Okay, hi. In this video, I'm going to show you how to open and decode the um, Vauxhall ignition immobilizers from various different Opel, GM, and Vauxhall vehicles. The immobilizer co code is held on a, a, a TMS 370 chip inside the immobiliser on the board inside this ear box. The sensor ring and immobiliser board are all contained inside this Siemens control box. If you want to get your PIN code and code new keys to a Vauxhall Opel GM vehicle you, you originally got a car pass with the details on it but over time these things get lost. You can go to Vauxhall and order a new PIN code and get the uh, immobiliser code from them but that can be expensive and it can be difficult. So there is a way of getting the details from the chip yourself with a few items of kit. So first thing we need to open the box up and we just lift the tabs up on the box. This is the back of the circuit board. The circuit board itself needs to come off and be turned over so we can remove the chip. It's held in place by four locating lugs and these two pieces of solder here that are connected to the um, immobiliser antenna. We need to remove the two pieces of solder here and then we can lift the board off. So the first thing we're going to do is remove these two pieces of solder and to do that we're going to use a decent soldering iron and some absorbent uh, braid so we'll get fired up get some power on set the soldering iron to a, a decent level I generally work around about 380 degrees, it makes it quicker. And we're just going to pull the solder off the board. So just let the soldering iron heat up. Once we've got the chip off, it's just a process of cleaning the chip up, cleaning the board up. We plug it into a uh, Amiga Mini Lab or similar sort of kit and then we can do a successful read and pull the pin code off. You can even pull the hex hexadecimal dump off the chip and get the entire coding of the immobiliser system from it. So all we do is we just start to melt this solder here just let this solder iron get hot there we go it's just gone just heat them up and just work his way around pulling off the little bits of solder. Patience and a little bit of time is useful on this. The longer you spend doing this and the more solder you get off it, like that you see, makes life much easier. Just keep on heating him up and pulling the solder off. Now normally I would just hold this in the vise and use that just to hold it in place. Sadly I'm resting the camera on the vise so I'm making my life a little bit harder for myself. Swap hands. Get a bit of abrasive uh, solder wick and just heat that up, hold it against the aerial, and this draws the solder up in to the, the braid. And there we are. As you can see, this is well used. 
you find a nice clean part of the the copper braiding you hold it against the the pad and just let the heat do the job and just hold it against it and just give it a little wiggle around and it just soaks up the solder see straight away as you can see there we've already pretty much cleaned off the solder on those two pads just check that the aerial's free to move which that one is check that one that one's not quite done a bit more solder to come off of this one underneath just get him underneath just hold him on it and just pull off any little vestiges last little bit of solder such as that there we go that one's now clean and free to come off so we can turn the solder iron off back in there and then we just release the lugs like that and we can start the board coming out as we can see no solder on those two pins and the board has started to move out just gently prise him away and we've now got the board this is the chip that we're concerned with here this is the TMS370 this is what holds all the uh, immobiliser code on it in hexadecimal format what we're going to do is we're going to take this chip off the board lift it off and then take it over to test equipment and try and get a successful read on it so we're going to apply a little bit of heat to this one we're not going to use the solder nine we're going to use a hot air gun so turn the hot air on again I find working round about 350 degrees works on this one quite nicely Just turn up the system up to the correct temperature slide a chip lifter which is just two prongs of metal on a handle underneath the TMS processor and don't force him just gently try and slide him in underneath sometimes it can be difficult sometimes it can be very easy it depends on how well it's been put on there originally there we go so he slides in underneath just give him a wiggle all the way through there we go we just have had a bit of a, a blurb with the camera so this is a slightly different board a slightly different chip but it's exactly the same way as the other. chip holder underneath the chip the hot air gun is up to temperature and we just lift the board fractionally off the work surface because we're going to use the weight of the board to help us get it off and we just apply a bit of heat around all the legs nice and steady nice and gentle just trying to keep it uniform and I can already see the solder starting to soften because I can see the flux bubbling and just let the weight of the board lift it off I can feel it going it should come off any second now just working his way around it apply some nice even heat Just a bit of patience again, just working his way around it nice and uniform. These take a little bit longer than the other type did. These seem to be a little bit better held on place because there's more legs. There we go, it's just going, and he drops off like that. And that's how you remove the chip. I didn't apply excessive heat, I didn't apply any force and as you can see the underside of the chip lots of dirty solder attached to the legs which will need clean off to get a good read and on the pads of the board you can see there that they're going to need cleaning off first thing we're going to do then is we're going to clean off the pads of the board I'm only going to do a little bit because it takes a little bit of time and again a little bit of patience to work on and all I'm going to use is the absorbent copper braiding to soak up the excess solder 
Right, just wait till the soldering iron's up to temperature. Is it there yet? Not yet. Get in there. And we just find a nice clean area of copper braid and we just hold it against the board, trap it under the soldering iron and we just work the soldering iron over the pads like so and you can feel as it lifts off and we just take it nice and steady backwards and forwards working it in and as you can see there it is fairly easy to do that area is nice and clean the other ones are not I'm going to leave it there and move back to the original chip so I put this one to one side and I put this chip over there and bring back the one that I was doing earlier there we go it's exactly the same even though it's a slightly different chip right now we need to clean up the legs on the chip so all we do is trap the absorbent braid with a soldering iron onto the chip and we just work from pairs of legs along the base of the chip nice and easy the cleaner you get it the more chance you've got again a successful read that's one side already done onto the next side that was just the hot air gun cooling itself down and shutting off it's not the world falling apart keeping on nice and easy on there working as well along the legs as you can see the solder is coming off nice and easy yeah like that that's two sides done working on to the third side you do go through a lot of this copper braid in by the way it's very very good and you can buy it cheap enough from places such as Maplins and RS or Tandy. For Tandy. Does Tandy exist anymore? I don't know. It's not in the UK anyway, so. I always get one that's just that little bit more awkward than the rest. You always do. But we just hold him on there and we just use it to soak up that little bit of solder. And we get almost there. There we go. I'll do that's nice and clean. What I've found useful as well, be careful because the chip is still hot, not too bad, is just gently run the tip of the soldering iron onto the edge of the legs and just reshine it. Just gently, you're not putting, trying to put much heat into it, as you can see I'm still holding it. It's only warm so it's not too bad. And we're just trying to make sure there's no raised areas of old solder on the chip that could affect the read on the EEPROM machine. So just working through, that's alright, that side's not too bad at all, let's get it a bit cooler and just work it across like that and there we go, there we go, that chip now is prepared with a little bit more work, where did I put him, that one there as we can see there I've already cleaned two areas of the pad off, I will do the other two uh, off video after I've done the read 